Uh, thanks for having me here today. Um, it's really awesome to be in Melbourne to talk about invisible animation. But before I start, um, I would like to give you um, a bit of an introduction. Uh, so, uh, as Fiona said, my name is uh, Stephen Fab, and um, I'm a product designer at uh, Campaign Monitor. And for the past uh, 12 months, uh, I've been working on the UI and uh, UX of uh, a product called uh, the Email Builder. And um, when I first joined the team 12 months ago, um, most of the UI was really, most of the UI was already there, but it was really static. You would, you would have, you would uh, abruptly change from one state to another. There was no transitions, no animation at all. And those abrupt changes made it really hard for the user to register and understand what was happening on the screen. So today, um, in this talk, I'm going to uh, show you um, how I made, we made uh, a static interface that kind of looks like this. So you can add a layout to your email and things abruptly change. It's really static. You delete and there is no feedback. It's pretty confusing. So how we've changed that into something that looks a bit more like, like this. Whoa. Cool. Actually, mistake. Yay, cool. So <laughs> some animation there. Uh, you click on the button and things nicely move and it makes a lot more sense. It's easier to register what's happening on the screen. So to the untrained eye, um, there is not that much difference between those two videos. Um, but that's okay, that's why, that's why I'm doing this talk today. Um, I'm basically going to show you um, the thinking and work I put to those animation to get this result. Um, and I'm hoping that by the end of the talk, um, you'll notice and appreciate those subtle and almost invisible animations. Because those animations can significantly improve the user experience of any product. This product, but also the product you guys may be working on at the moment. So let me give you a bit of tell you what the email blur is. It's a, it's a drag and drop tool that we've launched about um, 10 months ago now. It was in June 2014. And it helps people to design emails that will look beautiful on any device. And the main idea of, of that product was that um, we take care, campaign monitor, uh, of the, we take care of the coding complexity that comes with email design and you, the user, focuses on, on, on what really matters, the content of the email and the look and feel of the email. So I've made um, a video that actually, whoa, I don't know what's going on. There you go. So here's the email builder. So I click. I'm going to change the background color of the email, so I'm going to make it orange so it matches the CSS Conf branding. Um, and I'm going to put the logo in there as well. And I'm going to resize it a little bit so it's not too big, it's not too, not too small, it just feels right. And I can also add a bit of text in there. So, yeah, are you guys having fun? And I'm going to make that. <laughs> Gonna make that a little bit uh, bigger, heading one, and center it so it, it looks a bit nicer. And uh, I'm also going to add a button in there. And uh, yeah, click here if you are having fun. I would click there, I think, because I'm really having fun right now on stage. And <laughs> you can, um, yeah, I've obviously add a link to it so it goes to the CSS Conf website. And yeah, let's add a bit of spacing between the text and the button so it just feels right. 
And you can even um, add a photo to make this email a lot more appealing, right? So, as you might, as you might have guessed by now, I'm, I'm French, and we all live in Paris. We all wear a striped shirt with a beret carrying baguettes and a bottle of wine. That's what we all do. <laughs> and yeah, the email looks good on any device. And because building email used to be really, really hard, like it's insane, you have to code tables and stuff, it's really complicated. We created that drag and drop interface um, that feels really native uh, and natural. And that's why interaction design and animations were really important on that product. Because we wanted people to focus on, on the content and not coding really complicated emails. So animation on the web isn't, isn't a new thing. Uh, more than a decade ago, the cool trend was to make flash websites and uh, with crazy animations all over the place, you would click on a button or hover a button, it would bump into your face. It was a little bit insane and it was just over the top and people kind of hated animation, so, uh, flash, sorry, boo, boo flash. <laughs> and after that flash era, um, website became static again and it felt like people had a uh, tendency to, to, get, to make the amalgam between Flash and animation. The bad reputation of Flash kind of trespassed into animation territory. And that's why people think that, ooh, animations, even though we know that Flash doesn't mean animation at all. And yeah, it's only five or six years ago that um, animation on the web really started to surface again. This is another metaphor. And I, I promise this is going to be, this will be the last gif of this talk. I'll stop after that. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was interesting finding that uh, gif on Google. Um, so yeah, surfaced again and website become more and more interactive. Nice hover effects, nice transitions. Felt really nice, but it felt like um, a lot of people only saw animation as something delightful, nice, cool, sexy, magical, splendid, fun, elegant. That's how people usually describe animations. But this is not the main purpose of an animation, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, I really like delightful and nice animation, but I feel like the emphasis is often put on the animation itself rather than on improving the user experience through subtle and functional animations. The main purpose of an animation should be to improve the user experience. Um, it's only recently that uh, people mindset around animation started to change toward that, that approach. And Michael Villar uh, from Stripe, same as Ben, who talked yesterday, wrote a great article uh, explaining how Stripe uh, improved the payment experience with animation. And you're going, to be, you're going to be really familiar with this example he uses in this article, because Ben worked on that as well with Mikhail. Uh, so that animation adds context, basically. And it's clear that Stripe is asking for the phone number as part of the remember step. And this animation is still really nice, still delightful, the evening feel right, the timing is great. I guess you should know that by now because Ben spoke about that for like 10 minutes yesterday. <laughs> but um, you can clearly see that the main purpose of that animation was to improve the user experience. Um, this is another animation I really like. Uh, that's when Apple first released iOS 5 uh, some years ago, and they introduced the camera icon into the bottom right corner of the screen. So when I first updated my iOS to iOS 5, I had no idea how I would get to the camera. So in the first place, I just pressed the camera icon and 
then I saw that bounce effect. So then next time I knew that I had to slide up to get to the camera. So good user experience, improved with animation. But you have to be careful with animations because it's really easy to over animate things. And this is a good example of an animation that didn't make the cut in the email blurder. It was just, it was just too slow and um, teasing wasn't necessarily right and it was just, we dropped the idea because it was taking too much time to the user to then add the layout. And two years ago, uh, Pascual da Silva wrote this uh, article uh, called Transitional Interfaces which shows the benefits of uh, animation in user interfaces. And I found it really inspiring, and I would recommend you guys to read it if you're into animations. And he expanded this article into a talk um, at Web Direction uh, South in uh, 2013 in Sydney. And he gave a great, great advice there, um, including this one. Good animation is invisible, you shouldn't notice that uh, you're looking at animation. It's great advice that we've been uh, trying to apply on the email builder UI uh, with three key principles in mind. The first one being animation should improve usability. Animation should feel natural and subtle and animation should give feedback to the user. So we've tried to apply those three principles to the email builder UI. Here's a slide. I've taken those examples from a Pascal article I've shown earlier, where he explains um, basics of animation and easings and so on. But Eva really uh, explained that really well yesterday, so I'm gonna go over it really briefly. So basically this is the linear approach to animation and this is um, when it is is out, is out approach and uh, is in approach. You can obviously tweak those, those things with cubic Bezier and so on to make it fit, even to make it feel a lot more natural. Um, so using the right easing as well as finding the right timing and spacing uh, is really important and that is what makes uh, an animation feel right and, and natural. Although, um, having spent the last year uh, working on the email builder, I've learned that animation on the web, as opposed to native apps, comes with many challenges that go beyond finding the right timing, spacing, or easing. On the web, you cannot, you cannot predict uh, how fast the device of your user will be. While on native apps, you, you kind of know like your user is gonna use the latest iPhone now. So it's probably easier to make really perfect easings and animation on a device you know your user would be using. So animation on the web uh, do, not, do not render the same on all devices and browsers. And that's what I like about the web. Um, I like that challenge, actually. And this rendering inconsistency between browsers and uh, devices has led us to compromise things to create a good user experience uh, in the email builder. And in fact, some of the beautiful and useful interaction um, on our high-end devices didn't make it to the final product because they felt really jerky and slow on the device our user were more likely to use. So we wanted to make sure that an animation that looked like this, feels really nice, bounces, didn't end up looking really jerky and slow like this on low-end devices. So out of all the animations and interactive prototypes we put together in the design and concept stages, uh, uh, only the most useful and performant one made it to the final product. Um, and for us, it was all about handpicking the most useful animations and spending the time to get it just right, all in the interest of improving the user experience. So now I'm going to show you um, 
some uh, pieces of UI. Um, I'm going to show you how we animate them. So the first one is uh, add layer dropdown. So here's how it looks without animation. You click there and abruptly appears. So the problem, there is no context. Uh, it's not obvious that the dropdown is being shown as part of the add layout button. And the solution to that is to animate the dropdown so it looks like it's coming from the add layout button. And here's the result. Click on the layout and the dropdown nicely comes from the button and fades in. So this animation improves usability. It feels natural and subtle, and it gives feedback to the user. Now here's the CSS that we've used for it. I simplified it a little bit for this talk, but essentially we're changing the opacity of the dropdown from zero, so it's invisible, and um, we scale it down to 0 0.2, so it looks a bit small, and we translate it on the y-axis, so by 37%, so it looks like it's coming from where the button is. And then when the user uh, clicks the button, we trigger a class on that drop-down layout and over some really nice transitions with easing and so on, which I'm not really covering here, we uh, change the value from opacity 0 to 1 and we transform its scale from 0 0.2 to 1 and we translate it to its final position. So that's why you get this nice animation. The second piece of UI is um, the sidebar accordion. So when you click on the logo there, uh, things just abruptly appear, and it's really confusing. So the problem here is it feels really abrupt. It's not clear uh, what the image, text, and non-labels uh, mean and relate to. And the solution is animate the accordion's content, show the image text non-labels after a little delay. So when I'm talking about label, labels, um, that's the three tiles next to logo up there that appears after a little delay. So it's, it's really clear that those uh, labels are related to the content underneath it. So this animation feels, uh, improves usability, feels natural and subtle, and gives feedback to the user. Cool. Here's the CSS for it. Um, so here I'm just talking about the accordion's content. So as you can see, it kind of comes in and scale up a little bit. Um, so simple CSS, pretty good. Opacity zero by default, scale to 0 0.9, so it's, it's a little bit smaller and over a nice transitions with some cubic bezier easing and stuff, we transform it to opacity one and scale it to one. And about the labels up there, um, by default, they're not visible, opacity zero, and same as the add layout uh, drop down I showed earlier, they're just coming from 15 pixel, so you can't really see them, they're underneath it, and then they come up. Um, third piece of UI, button, button state. So in the public version of the email builder, you can, when you've designed your email, you can uh, download the files at the end, and you just need to enter your email there. And then you press send me the files. And yeah, you're just hoping for the best. You're going to receive your email with the files. But it's really confusing here. <laughs> There's no feedback. The user doesn't know if pressing the button actually did something. And the solution is to tell the user what's happening behind the scene. So that actually, that's actually really similar to the, similar, uh, to the Stripe animation that Ben shown yesterday. Um, that's, that's the result. Um, I enter my email. 
And when I press send me the file, we're just changing the state of the button. So it says sending me email. We're giving feedback to the user. And after a little delay, we just show this uh, tick icon. That means, yeah, it's been sent. And this is a lie again. We don't really know if, if that email has been sent, but it's pretty likely that it has been sent. And it makes the user feel comfortable. He knows what's happening behind the scene. Or he thinks he knows, because that's a lie. But but that's good. And yeah, that improves usability. It feels natural and subtle and gives feedback to the user. And here's the, the CSS for it, simplified again. Uh, by default, the button is green. And when we add a disabled class to that button, we change its style so it looks disabled, becomes gray. And after two seconds of delay, we just um, move the, the sent, the success icon from 30 pixel to zero. So it looks it's coming from the top. Uh, layout controllers. Here's how it, how it looks. Um, oh, I should actually give you a bit of background on this one. So um, in the email builder, you can, you can add a bunch of layouts to your email. Um, and you have the option to, yeah, those, through those controllers to move the layouts around, up and down. And you can also uh, duplicate those layouts uh, when you click on the cog icon or delete that layout. So that's, that's what those controllers do. The problem here is that um, it's not obvious that the controllers uh, control the layout that is being hovered. The solution was to make the controllers come from the layout they control and hover. This is a really, really subtle animation, but it really improved user experience. Uh, it's really subtle. They're coming from, from the left now. They're coming from the layout instead of just appearing. Uh, hover, and they come from the left. Um, so that improves usability, feels natural and subtle, and it gives feedback to the user. And pretty simple CSS is just to translate minus 32 pixel to zero when you hover. Yeah. Add or duplicate a layout. So that's, that's how it looks when you add a new layout. Just the layout just, it feels really abrupt. Uh, the layout of the page suddenly changed. It's really confusing. And the solution is to make the new layout progressively, uh, progressively appear with animation. Um, so here's the outcome. I drag it and the layout kind of comes in and fades in and feels way nicer and it's improved user experience. And performance was something we had to look as well and it had to feel very fast, not slow and jerky. Again, that improves usability, it feels natural and subtle uh, and it gives feedback to the user. Here's the CSS for it. Um, same principle, by default the opacity is set to zero and its scale is set to 0 0.7, so it's a bit smaller. And when uh, we add this layout to the DOM, we change its opacity to one and we scale it to one. And there's a bit of a weird thing happening here. Uh, I'm sure you guys have, have noticed how do we know this new layout is gonna be 1,500 pixel height. So we're using that property to do this, uh, this transition where the, everything moves down when we add that new layout. And um, actually in one of the prototype we've, um, we've done in the first stages, uh, we were um, dynamically calculating the height of those new layouts. And that we could have the perfect easing, really nice timing, and it felt really great on this computer right here was amazing, fast, good animation. But when we tested that on, on uh, low-end devices or some of the 
device or user were most likely to use, it felt, felt really jerky and slow. It was like, so that's a compromise we went for. And the animation is not as nice. The easing is not perfect, perfect, but it was still a great outcome and the user experience was improved for everyone. Here's the um, last piece of animation I'm going to show you today, um, which is delete a layout. Here's how it looks. Delete, boom, just disappeared. Pretty, pretty confusing, especially if you have really similar layouts in your email. You don't know what you've just deleted. It feels really abrupt. It's not clear that the layout has been deleted. The solution, make the layout progressively disappear. And here's, the, here's what we've done. Click on delete, confirm, and it fades out, and then all the other layouts come up. So when the email contains a lot of similar and or, or almost uh, identical layouts, this animation becomes even more useful. It shows what layout has been deleted by sliding up the content of the email. So it improves usability, feels natural and subtle, and it gives feedback to the user. And yeah, CSS, pretty simple. Again, pretty similar to what I've shown you earlier. Um, we change it op the opacity of that layout from 1 to 0, and we scale it from 1 to 0 upon 8, with some really nice transitions uh, using, using cubic bezier and so on. So by now, um, you should hopefully appreciate those subtle changes uh, I've shown you in the video at the beginning of the talk. So I'm going to play it again. Yeah. Cool, feels much, much nicer now. And the user experience is improved. So those, those animations are really subtle, almost invisible. But they definitely improve the user experience. Um, so I'm sure the best motion designers out there would easily point out how those animations could be improved. But animation on the web comes with compromise. And it's true, um, there's a lot we could have done around bouncing and easing and timing, etc. But we had to drop those in some cases because it wasn't fast enough on a device or user we're more likely to use. But that's okay. Um, it's a conscious, conscious decision we've made to provide the best user experience across devices. And there's still a lot you can do on the web uh, to create, create animation. There's just one little thing I wish we could uh, we could do. Uh, nowadays, everyone is talking about progressive enhancement. Scott was talking about that yesterday, and responsive design. So you deliver the right content to the right device, and depending on the connection and a lot of things, we enhance the experience. But those principles could apply to animation too. So I was wondering, I think it would be great if we could do responsive animation and be able to create different different animation based on some media query or something so you, you can tell if a device is slow or fast and enhance the experience for the user that, that are lucky enough to have a great computer and a fast connection. So I had a look and uh, media queries Four seem to have an option to detect if a device is slow uh, by using the update frequency property, and you can uh, target uh, with a media query slow devices. So that's something we could hopefully use. That seems like a good solution, but I'm really hoping that someone will come up with something a bit more robust. And yeah, I'm keen to hear your thought um, after the talk if you have any ideas how we could achieve that. Um, anyway, um, seeing more and more people talking, speaking, designing interfaces with um, animation doesn't mean that 
you should animate all the things. And if uh, if I've done my jump right, you should notice you shouldn't notice the animation shown earlier um, while using the email builder. So, oh, I screwed that up. Cool. Invisible, that's how animation should be. And I wrote an article uh, originally called Invisible Animation, so you can have a look at that if you want, and there's a link as well to go to the campaign monitors email folder. And if you want to contact me and talk about animation, here are my details. Thank you very much.